Hey, what's up, guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of my California Golden Seals Draft to Glory franchise mode right here in NHL 19. It's a mouthful, I know. In this episode, we prep for our next season, of course, fresh off of a draft. And as we get into this, uh, first and foremost, again, thank you guys for the support with the start of this series. It's always nice when I get numerous comments saying, for the love of God, upload more. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I try to balance as much as I can. Maybe I try to balance a little bit too much and should go with daily uploads on a series like this. It's what we used to do, but at the very least, we're back again. Now, as far as the goaltending situation goes, I could talk about the last draft, but let's just go by position here. Goaltenders. Of course, the last draft was pretty big for us, but the addition of Sestito and Wilson. Debate over whether or not I needed both of them, but if we want a more reliable backup you know, beyond Fedorov, it might be for the best to have those two as a one-two punch. The question is, how good are they? Because we don't yet know. We will sign Sestito, and we will sign Pedro Wilson, and we will take it from there. Of course, we have six goaltenders. We're not going to have to need to worry about drafting a goaltender anytime soon. We are good to go in that regard. Uh, defensively, I'm going to let go of Cam Barker. Still can't believe he is in this game. I'll let go of him as well. Of course, we have Niedermeyer. His crazy development last season was a highlight. But aside from that, we're going to need some help, really, as we just have Cook and Reichel. But the two new additions of Jenks, and in particular, Rokan, the fourth overall pick in last year's draft hopefully that proves to be the right decision of course we went with the defensive help over the offensive help for grappin for the moment or frag pain i'm just gonna go with for grappin at this point i think i am for uh well then again it probably isn't even for grappin is it well, it probably isn't frag a pain for Grappen, uh, Frag of Pain, maybe. I might just go up for Grappen. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, regardless, he's a monster. As far as Frag of Pain's offensive help, I mean, we do have Kaliev, but certainly in this next draft, we're going to be looking for that extra bit of help. And of course, we do have two guaranteed low elites that have been added to the team with Baldwin and Greer. I'll be intrigued to see what Nova Seltsev ends up being. And seeing as, of course, we're still in the early stages of this series, it's still worth it for us to sign everybody. Not exactly a recommended move if you're just doing a normal franchise mode. You pretty much only have to sign your first round pick. From there, just let everyone else kind of develop. Because remember, much like in NHL 18, players can still develop without being signed, which is nice. It's not a necessity to sign everybody, unless you're doing what we're doing here, in which case you might as well, because you don't have to worry about like, oh, I have a 57 overall taking up a roster spot. It doesn't matter, because we're going to have a terrible team anyway, so it's all good. It's not hurting anything. As we will sim to the start of free agency, we are going to have a couple of scouts drop. I completely forgot to re-sign them at the start of this, but that's okay. We will hopefully be able to get them back. I keep forgetting on occasion that, you know, we do have free agent scouts. Let's see here, though. Uh, do we have any A-grade scouts that are worth bringing in? That we do. A-plus from Russia, Igor Shirokov. You would be a tremendous addition. And there are a couple of other A-grades as well. Two other Sims and Kid. So we'll see what we can do here. Silas Sims. I don't know if we're going to want to fire anybody. I mean... Again, the A grade as far as what they're good at scouting, right? So that's where the A grade comes in. It comes in with their evaluation abilities, and it shows how good they are, as opposed to the region familiarity. So you have to remember that with these scouts, they do technically have two different grades. The overall, how good they actually are, and the region efficiency. So don't fire anybody based off of region efficiency, unless they are actually terrible, but you do want to judge it off of the grade. That's the first step, of course, is making sure that you have these top-notch scouts. Uh, and we are actually going to let go, maybe, because they are European. That's why we kept them. Mm. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Quite a few B-grade scouts. I'm just not sure who we want to ditch, but bringing in some A-minus scouts would be kind of nice, because, of course, we have plenty of people who are good enough in the U.S. regions. Look at that, USA East is ridiculous. Efficiency, the Duke and Sweeney. I mean, we should be okay regardless. I think I think we'll be all right, actually. Let's just see if these first two scouts accept. Uh, we're going to handle signing our scouts first and then worry about who's on the free agent list. Although, 
Uh, is Shirokov accepts? We probably do want to take a look at the top. So Shirokov and Sims have accepted. Don't know if the high-end players would have accepted on free agency already. They might have. Let's take a look. Signings. Okay, so the big names will still be there, uh, which is fine, actually. I just don't know if I want to hire or fire anybody right now. i got to be honest. I'm very tempted to do that full overhaul. Shirokov being there is solid. We do have quite a few scouts though now that are good in Europe. It's just, do we want to uh, ditch one other? From a B to an A- minus is what we're arguing for, really. I think we'll stay. I think we'll stay. Because otherwise we might end up... Hmm. You know what? No, screw it. Screw it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Indecisiveness reigns supreme. Let's see who we can ditch here. Uh, so again, as far as like the U.S. scouts, we had a ton of them. Uh, let's go ahead, and again, right now I care only more about the fact that they're a B grade. I think Leduc is going to go, Sweeney is going to go, I think just really any B scouts in general. The two B minuses, actually here, so we fired two, do we have anybody else who happens to be good in Europe at an A minus? Because that, that could uh, open up room for us to get rid of the other guys. Uh, we have Kuka, Lasse Kuka, a B grade. We'll uh, sign him up. That'll be one of the excuses to get rid of the B minus and Sundin as well. Sven Sundin. See if we can get him rather than Philly. There is still the A minus grade there in Scoville as well. So getting rid of one other North American scout could pay off. And I think. Ah, uh, who do we want this to be? Who do we want to get rid of? Let's have it be Sloan. Why not? B grade, Clifford Sloan. Yeah, gots to go. Let's try to bring in that other A minus scout. I think there was one or two others. They must have been signed. So, uh, Amrit Scoville. Hell of a name. Uh, Atlanta's interested? What? Did a team relocate? What the hell do you mean Atlanta's interested? Did somebody relocate? Is relocation even on? Let me uh, let me take a look here. What the hell do you mean Atlanta? Team stats. What are you talking about? In the Pacific, that's fine. Hey, who the hell would ATL be? Like, have they just not moved yet? Like, why do I have a feeling a team just hasn't moved yet? This will be interesting once we get to the preseason, like... What the hell do you mean Atlanta's interested? It's the only thing ATL could possibly stand for, <laughs> as Sundin and Scoville have signed, so that's good. Uh, let's take a look at the free agent list. Of course, we're going to have to bring in some veterans uh, on the offensive side and defensive sides. And Alex Ovechkin, Nicholas Backstrom, and Jeff Skinner are the top three left. OV as a free agent, and he hasn't signed yet. That is insane. Uh, defensively, who do we want to bring in? Now is the point where I'm really concerned we might accidentally bring in someone who's a little bit too good. Uh, because we don't exactly know how well people have declined. Uh, so Varakis, for that reason. Ville Varakis. Let's go ahead and uh, sign you up at 36. Might as well give you the three-year deal. Uh, Mike Moore. Mike Moore. Why not? Sign you up as well. Give you a half-decent contract. Uh, Florian Ketimer, guess what, buddy? You just won the lottery. Congratulations. Here's a massive contract for a year. Who else do we have? Carson, we know you're going to be uh, relatively terrible. 34, so I'm not banking on you retiring. And Jordan or Jonathan Sigalet? I know that there were two, and they were both with the Bruins at one point. Jonathan, so Jordan was the goaltender. It's weird how you remember some of those names from the past. Uh, and Lawson, Stefan Lawson will be the last defenseman that we look to sign. The rest will have to be forwards. And we'll sign a couple of other big-time contracts here. So Gabrick right now is the oldest. Uh, Thornburg, we know, will be fairly terrible. No disrespect. Let's go one-way deal on that and pay you a boatload of money. And we'll go ahead and sim forward from here just to sort that out. Of course, the good thing is... We're going to be able to sim through the regular season fairly quickly. We're not going to make the playoffs either. So we pretty much have our formula down. Kuka has accepted as a scout. Sigalette, Thornburg, Lawson, Ketimer, Moore have all accepted. Do we have anybody else? Barker? 
I don't remember sending Barker a deal. <laughs> I guess I did. I remember letting go of him. I don't remember sending him a deal, though. Where are we at cap-wise, then? Because that's just weird. Uh, we still have $33 million in cap space. Right. Defensively, we could probably use a couple more guys and then just a ton of forward depth. So let's look to do that. We still have 16 contract spots. So I think I'm going to bring in two or three defensemen and then just a boatload of forwards as I accidentally went back to contracts and said to free agency a tad bit of menu lag. Not as consistent or as big of an issue as it was for me in NHL 18 at least. But defensively, again, let's look for the veterans just so that we know they're kind of terrible. Let's bring back Kalteva, I guess. We just had you signed. Kalteva. Kalteva. Here's a massive contract for you, buddy. And who else? Kovacevic? Kovacevic? Perhaps? Why the hell not? And Brett Festerling. Great name. Brett Festerling. Sign him up. And then for the forwards, there's going to be a lot of guys here. Who are we going to bring in? Let's bring back Brandon Prust. For obvious reasons, it's Brandon Prust. Uh, who else do we have? Mike Brown, again, you're going to be a little bit too good. Alex Bolduc, sign him up. We have, I think that's Camille Kreps. It definitely is, if he's 35 years old. Hell of a beard. Steve Bernier, Trevor Smith? Trevor Smith, you're going to be a bit too good. Colin McDonald, we have Alton and Mrs. Kavapel. Who else do we have? We need to bring in a lot of these guys, in fairness. Again, we had 16 contract spots. We're still up to only eight offers. Orville Redenbacher, sign him up. Why the hell not? Who else? Kohler. Kohler. Right. Are you wearing eyeliner? I'm not judging you. By all means, live your life. But interesting choice for a team picture. Uh, Elkins and Rod Pelly. Why the hell not? Every team needs a <laughs> every team needs a nice rod. Can we can we quote that? Can we can that be in the official book of uh, Tugi's famous quotes? I think that needs to be. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and sign him to a stupid contract as well. Uh, again, we yeah we'll we'll be able to afford that. The two the two final stupid contracts as we sort out the team for this season. I said we should be good to go here, especially if I just go sim the next season. We should be fine. Pelly, Prost, everyone's going to accept. No one's going to reject. Are you kidding me? They actually want to work for a living instead of sitting at home and doing nothing. Just like me. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. As we move on. As we move on, I'm intrigued to see if we have any decent progression from the likes of Fragapain and from the likes of Niedermeyer as well. Of course, we'll find out what some of these prospects end up looking like through the preseason, but that off-season development is going to be key. For Grappen, had a or Frag of Pain, I'll, I'll sort it out one of these days. A good old HF, uh, home of the HF boards. Uh, but 46 points in 82 games, considering he had basically no talent around him last year. That's actually a phenomenal number. If we end up getting him next to someone else of an 85 vote overall up, or, you know, that quality... Uh, he's going to be a 70-point guy, I would imagine, uh, which is fine, you know, certainly fine by me and good enough to see us have success later on down the road, I would expect. For now, let's get this roster set up for the preseason, shall we? We have just enough cap space. Uh, so we know you two are already sorted. So Wilson and Sestito, let's bump you two up. Defensively... Uh, we need Rokan, I think he was the only one, or Jenks. No, we needed Jenks as well. He's the only other one. So yeah, Rokan and Jenks will be the two that need to be called up, which means defensively, Lawson isn't ours. Who else is ours? Just Reichel so far. Can I send down you three? Yes, I can. So Jenks, Rokan, Reichel, Pesh, Barker, and Kaltava will be sent down. I think we're one defenseman short i think we're one defenseman short of being able we are actually one defenseman short of being able to have uh the best team possible uh so i'm gonna keep cam barker yeah let's go cam barker we'll keep him on the roster for this season those will be our six so like i said one defenseman short and then forward wise who do we have here 
So like Karainen, Elkins, Altonen, Koivisto. We're going to have quite a few guys, of course, that we can drop down here. The good thing is, is that, of course, we're basically setting up the roster for this season. We're going to be terrible, but we have that many, uh, you know, that, that much more in terms of players that are actually ours to fit into this lineup. It's looking pretty good. Uh, who else do we have here? Nova Seltsev, Orville Redenbacher. We don't got to worry about you. Greer will get into the lineup. Let's see here. Who else can we get rid of? Coivisto, Thornburg, and Barta. We'll drop you guys down. And I think we only have one or two others, right? Let me check here. California. It's just Baldwin. The the forgotten Baldwin. Luke Baldwin is the last guy. So Bachman's ours, of course. Uh, so Pelly, Bolduke. Okay, so let's drop this guy. We'll still have Rod Pelly there for the moment. So that's 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. So I think we'll keep Pelly and Bolduke on the roster. And our team is set for this next season. We're good to go. Roster editing took a little bit longer. Management took a little bit longer than I would have hoped. But if we go best lines, that is what we come up with for this season. Rokon on that top pairing with Niedermeyer. That's a good sign. And Wilson as the goaltender. I suppose that's the one thing that isn't set in stone just yet is who the goaltenders will end up being. We'll have that be based off of the best overalls. So as far as scouting goes... As far as scouting goes, I'm going to have to set this up really quickly just to optimize this. So give me a one moment. All right. Again, scouting-wise, we are set up. It's something we'll keep an eye on throughout the course of the season. Quite a few scouts set up in the same region, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means, if anything, we'll get more information out of that region, of course, around the same time, deadline day. Uh, whereabouts, we'll start to take a look at what uh, regions haven't exactly gotten a ton of focus for now, though, speaking of focus, let's get through the preseason. Let's see what some of these early results happen to be. We'll see who ends up making the Golden Seals and who ends up being a member of the Doolin Narwhals this season, particularly in goal and basically only in goal. We know that the rest of the team is set up and good to go. And you know, say what you want, it's preseason. Teams are definitely not running their top rosters, uh, but we're 3-3 three and three right now with a chance to finish with the winning record in the preseason, which is basically our version of the Stanley Cup, and we did it. Four and three in the preseason. Maybe things are looking up for us. Spoiler alert, they're definitely not. <laughs> Just because teams aren't running their best rosters. So let's take a look here now. If I go best lines, nothing changes. Goaltenders, oof. Okay, we still don't know for sure on Wilson. It's looking like he might not be a starter. And in Sestito, of course, we're still not sure either. So I'm thinking neither of those two will be on the NHL roster to begin. Uh, it will be down to Fedorov and Akison to begin this season. And in between the others, I mean, Stahlberg was back up. It's going to be Wilson and Sestito, I think, as our actual goaltenders. And then defensively, of course, we are good to go. So let's get these lines ready for this next season. We'll go best lines. So it's going to be Bachman and Kaliev with Fragapane on the top line. From there, it's looking rough. Very, very rough. Rokon, though, not locked in at the 77 quite yet, but we do know he's a medium elite. So Rokon could end up being uh, the guy we needed on that top pairing with Josiah Niedermeyer. Controversial pick for sure, but he could end up being the guy that we needed. And boy, the defense is going to suck here as we, or the goaltending is going to suck as we're going to go for Pedro Wilson. And Stahlberg will take a seat for Sestito. So we'll see what kind of development we can get from those two. But the dual and narwhals are going to have themselves a very rough go this season. For now, let's get this going. A new season for the reborn California Golden Seals. Are we going to find any success? No. <laughs> no, we're not. It's another season, which is pretty much how the early stages of a draft of glory series are, you know, always go. This is what the early stages are all about as we hope to win 
the lottery. Again, we're only adding seven players a year. It's going to take a little bit of time for the roster to be made up solely of players from, uh, you know, our drafted, yeah, from the, the drafted variety. Let's go with the drafted variety. Why not? It's going to take us a while, you know, a couple of seasons. And then we, of course, have to start hoping that the picks that we're, you know, getting actually end up delivering. We'll see what happens. As we get a look early on here, Isaac Commodore is number one on the board, but Callie Olawson and Barry Fuller. Good old Barry Fuller. I doubt that we have any gems or busts just yet. Indeed, we do not. But shout out to Trey Lowe and Justin McElrath as we'll continue onward here. What do you think, by the way? Early stages, we haven't won a game. Do we win a game this season? Do we win two games this season? We already have a win against Buffalo, so you know what? That might have to change. What do you think? Five wins on the year? Two wins? What do you think? Let's put the over-under at two at this point, seeing as we already beat the Buffalo Sabres. How successful will the Golden Seals be this season? I honestly don't know. <laughs> and the, the, the unfortunate thing is, of course, is that we can't even really claim that this is the best team that we've ever had. Of course, we had some of the, uh, mainly the first team, of course, out of the expansion draft. We had some decent members of that team, even though, of course, they were... The majority of the players that we took in the expansion draft were dropped to the free agent list. I think perhaps most shockingly, even though it is made up of free agent signings, the fact that the Duel and Narwhals have won five games is simply incredible to me. How that team with that goaltending has managed to win five games, I simply cannot comprehend, as it is apparently going to be a good year for rookies, as we pick up our second win of the season, perhaps we uh, we get one win a month, and that's the way it's going to settle out. That could very well be the case. We get a shootout loss against New Jersey. Do you know how bad you have to be to allow us to get to the shootout? Three wins on the year, an overtime win against the Caps. Don't look now. We could We could maybe flirt with ten wins. We average a win or two a month, and we could make this work. We might not be worse than the expansion Senators. <laughs> There's a chance that we might not continue to set the bar uh, just in terms of being the worst this league's ever seen. Outside chance. Essential Scouting has released another update. And unfortunately, we're not looking too good here on the, uh, the scouting front. We have info on Quincy Sanford. Anybody else? Okay, Christoph Dinger. Info on him as well. We'll definitely have to. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this. Gems or bust? Two gems: Keegan Whitmore and Bryson Webb, who is projected to go very late. A bust, though, in Devin Koliakovo. Right now, early on, is showing up at medium elite. So we'll see. Comparable to Kuznetsov as well. I'm in, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued though. If someone's medium elite and they're designated as a bust, but their grades are looking pretty damn good. What would they actually end up being? That's my question. Like, if they're showing up with, like, B grades, but the scout's saying they're a bust, how is that going to work? Like, is the potential going to be drastically different, even though the scout's telling us, no, this is the potential? I'm not sure how that would work, to be honest. As we continue on here through December, might be something worth looking into uh, later on down the road. For now, though, of course, we are focused on just simming through and getting to this next draft, getting our next additions to the team. And hopefully, Fragapain and co. end up having a half-decent season this time out. Half-decent in terms of progression and point production, mainly. Uh, what's the point production going to be when we're getting shut out half the time and we only have four wins on the season? It's not going to be great, so we at least have our expectations, you know, tempered. We know... We know the the best that we're going to get. The closer Fragapane can be to 50 points on the year, the better. As long as he's over 40, I'm, I'm over the moon with that type of production from him. Uh, trade block, no thank you. We have nothing to offer, nor do we want anything. Our team is perfect the way it is. By the way, we beat Pittsburgh last week in the shootout. Five wins on the season. The magic, the power of Fedorov in goal. Unbelievable. And North Bay with 16 wins 
on the year as well. I always, uh, I've always said, of course, in draft to glory, you're that much more unlikely to see the AHL team find success because we would have to really hit the mark year in and year out to have a half decent AHL team. Maybe, maybe the duel in Narwhals will, uh, will find that level of success. It's been an extreme rarity. We've been doing draft to glory since NHL 17, so. We've run quite a few of these types of series at this point in time. And, of course, this one's just more straightforward with the exception of, of course, it being the first non-fantasy draft. Draft glory with teams being able to be the same. I am probably going to get complaints. I just realized. It's bad that I just realized, like, oh, yeah, I was going to look to see where Alex Ovechkin signs. <laughs> Didn't end up doing that. Sorry. That's that's the worst thing. I am so forgetful in a series. Uh, no, thank you. I'm so forgetful in a series to constantly check to see what the AI are doing. I get extreme tunnel vision on our own team, our own club, and setting everything up and making sure that we don't make any mistakes on that front. Uh, that I am prone to just completely ignoring the outside world <laughs> and not seeing what the AI is end up doing. Can we break seven wins? Can we break seven wins before the deadline? That is my question. 6, 46, and 7. There's 7. We beat the Rangers. How do you like us now? Trade deadline's on March 1st. We have 7 wins. Can we make it 8? Can we get back-to-back -back wins for the first time in franchise history, probably? No, we very much cannot. 7, 48, and 7. Uh, we will not edit the trade block, thank you. And to be honest, we're just going to keep simming until we get an up. Uh, an update on central scouting and we'll take it from there as far as moving any scouts around that we have to uh, but for now of course we're still looking all right seven wins on the year eight overtime or shootout losses as well those pity points are adding up i mean we're definitely going to be the worst team in the league but eight fifty two and eight make it nine are we going to hit 10 wins this year it could happen we're going to be running low on time here. This should be central scouting popping up. Indeed it is. We're going to be running low on time, but we could hit 10 wins as... Okay, there we go. Information wise, we're looking good. We might want to end up scouting Switzerland. Actually, let's see here. So rest of world, nobody there. Russia, we have info. Guys like Turakov, Barlamov, Perez Hogan. From there, it kind of drops off. We're going to want to take over a Russian scout. Nobody in the Alvenskin. Uh, Finland as well. We're going to want to do a better job. Sweden. Uh, EBEL. Bjorn Braun. That could work. Czech Extra Liga. Actually looking pretty good. Chad Reza. Bebko. All right. And then we don't have anybody in Switzerland. Uh, Germany is looking okay, though. We could move our scout out of Germany if we want to. I think now will be the time where we stop it. We'll take a look around the league, see who's worth scouting from here, and then switch up any scouts that we have to. So let's see what we have here. Hopefully I can do this in a somewhat timely manner. Uh, so Shirokov in the DEL. Are you the only one? You are the only one in the DEL. So let's see who we have here. So Dinger is pretty much good to go. He is good to go. Good to go there. Could get other strengths, although apparently he has none. We're looking for the first guy where we really don't have that... Uh, that full potential. Graham Greening hasn't done much. Danner hasn't done much. Is there going to be anybody where it's like worth scouting them, basically? Not seeing anything point-wise. I think our scouts might have it right. I think he might have it right. So, uh, Shirokov, are you good at scouting anywhere else? Not bad in the Extra Liga. Not bad in Austria. Do we have anybody in the Extra Liga? We do. Okay, so Shirokov, you're going to go to Austria because why the hell not? <laughs> that is the that is the correct answer. Why the hell not? Let's send you to Austria. And the only other thing i got to worry about is just sending somebody over to... Uh, sending somebody over to Switzerland. So all of that's good. Who wants to go to Switzerland? One of you four. Wants to go to Switzerland. I know it. See? A plus. Peter Kopetsky. To Switzerland you go. It's a fine nation of mountains and stuff. 
I'm sure. There's stuff in Switzerland. Let me tell you about the stuff in Switzerland. There's a lot of it. Let's move on. Pretty much good to go now through the end of the year and really up to the draft. I mean, maybe like a month before we'll double check just to make sure there aren't players that uh, have been completely avoided. It's a somewhat late start to the season. April 9th is our final regular season game. We've hit 10 wins on the year. That is phenomenal. Make it 11 back-to-back -back wins, I think, for the first time in franchise history. Let me know for sure with some of the other seasons that we've gone through already. Things are looking up for the California Golden Seals. 12 wins. Can we hit 13? Perhaps even 14? Or is that too much to ask for? It's probably going to be too much to ask for. 12 wins. 62 losses. 8 overtime losses. And that will do it for this season. I will take it, all things considered. 12 wins. That is phenomenal for us. And certainly unexpected. Did not think we would get into double digits this early, especially with how bad the goaltending is on paper. But there you go. You never quite know, especially too with the... With the Sim Engine, you never quite know what kind of random results you are going to get. It happens all the time. All the time. But that's okay. It's all right. I'm good with it. Sometimes that can be beneficial. Sure, sometimes Arizona wins the Cup in year one. Sometimes we win 12 games. It's just the way the world works. You never quite know what you're going to get. Central Scouting. Let's take a look here. What do we have? So still no information on Commodore, but he is being scouted. So that's fine. I'm going to trust our scouts here. And granted, Kimo Curry, Lysak, oh boy. Mm, maybe I shouldn't. You know what? I shouldn't. I absolutely should not trust our scouts. They've done well with some general info, but now we need to make sure that we have everything set up and good to go. So I think, again, allow me to make a magical jump cut, and I'll set up this as best I can. All right, again, scouting, good to go. Hopefully avoiding any mistakes that the AI were, uh, you know, setting us on the path towards by not scouting certain players. Like I said, having scouting on both, essentially having it on auto, but picking your spots, I still feel as though that is the best way to go unless you want to uh, be super controlling about it and handle everything throughout every season. Uh, but for the most part, for the most part, that's the way to go. You just gotta gotta keep an eye on it sometimes. As uh, Fragapane put up 54 points, it's not too bad. Edmonton wins the Stanley Cup 4-1 over Pittsburgh. As you get a look at the playoff tree, uh, player stats for this Oilers team. Let's take a look. See what the Cup winning team looks like in this year. As Drysaddle, McDavid, Nugent Hopkins led the way. Uh, Jacob or Jacob Shishkinov led the way there. And aside from that, I mean, I didn't lead the way, but he did very well. Martin Furk is the only real major addition to that team that you wouldn't expect to see. They only ran five defensemen, and it worked for them, so why not? And Henrik Lundqvist in Edmonton. Not a fantasy draft. Henrik Lundqvist is a Stanley Cup champion. Thanks to the Oilers, back-to-back -back cups, I thought so, but I've run so many franchise modes at this point, I do get it confused sometimes. Patrick Kane wins the Art Ross, the Hart to Claude Giroux, Ghost Bear wins the Norris, Patrick Kane, the Lady Bing, the Calder to Ramirez in New York, Con Smythe to Hank, Vesna to Freddie Anderson, Jennings to Vasilevsky, Rokan won the Masterton, Bergeron the Selkie, Giroux the Ted Lindsay, and John Tavares the Rocket Richard down in the AHL. David Kasha was league MVP. And from there, Sheelington, defenseman of the year. Carter Hart, the best goaltender. And Kari Lettinen was the MVP of the playoffs. Kari Lettinen, the MVP of the playoffs. Again, as far as our regular season stats go, let's take a look. Fragapane leading the way. Kaliev, 37 points as well. And unfortunately, it would have sent down, yeah, it sent down a lot of our guys. Just kind of reordered the roster, but gives you a look at what some of our top guys were capable of. Rokon, 20 points. Of course, we'll take a look at the progress reports here before moving on. Uh, but as it auto reorders the roster and sends down a bunch of our guys, where it's just like, what the hell are they doing here? 
Uh, we're going to miss out on some of the stats. Niedermeyer is now the top-rated player on the team, an 89 overall, a legit 89 overall at medium elite. What a monster he is. Fragapane in an 88, Rokan's an 81. So say what you want about being a little bit questionable about it, but Rokan's looking pretty damn good. Kaliev's a 77, Cook a 76, Bachman a 71, as is Fedorov. Uh, Barker we don't have to worry about, Varakis we don't have to worry about. Uh, Reichel, a 69, very nice, Axon 68. Anybody else who's actually ours that we need to worry about? The answer's no. Down in the AHL, though, Wong a 66, Baldwin a 65. Uh, anybody else? Saugus a 63, Coriston, Jenks also 63s, Pedro Wilson up to a 62, Curtis a 61, uh, Greer up to a 58, not bad, a 55 for Brock Sestito, 52 for Nova Salt 7 from there. You get into depressing territory with the very, very low 50s. So yet again, another another strong season in terms of player development for us, mainly on the defensive end, as Niedermeyer made some very good strides forward. Rokan, there's always going to be that debate whether or not we should have taken a defenseman in that instance, but I'm happy with what we ended up with. Unfortunately, I'm not happy with the fact that yet again we have lost the lottery. <laughs> the fourth overall pick yet again belongs to us. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable how uh, much bad luck we have had thus far as you get a look at the number one, although our scouts say that Commodore is number one. So Olassen jumping up out of nowhere. Uh, in terms of gems, there's a boatload of them. Whitmore, Sasaki, Henrique, Peelstrom, uh, Bryson Webb, and Paradis. A couple of busts as well. Wilm, Koliakovo, and Guy Carpentier. So there you go, quite a few gems to keep our eye on as well. Would have been nice to win the lottery, but what can you do? As Joe Thornton calls it, a career at 41 years old. I've had him stick around until he was 43 before. Thornton and Marlowe both calling it quits in the same year. Seems, seems right in a way. Chara also calls it a career. I'm upset. <laughs> now I'm upset. Chara, Seidenberg, and Boychuk all calling it a day. At the same time, Roberto Luongo as well, 539 wins. That is a hell of a class of players leaving the league at one given time. That said, we're here. It's another draft. Let's do this. We don't really have anything to attend to. Let's see what we can get this year. So it's Olassen going number one, Commodore and Scavello, the defenseman. We're going to be looking for a forward here. Unfortunately, uh, that's that's not exactly right for the plans. As far as our scout ranks, uh, we have two defensemen. We might have to take another defenseman. I think we have to. All right, well, it was going to be a forward, but as far as who's available here, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no question. We have to take one of the two defensemen. That is That is unfortunate. Harris Hogan, Varlamov, we know what they're locked into. Do we have any medium elite forwards? We do. It's Grant Wilsey, but there's also that defenseman Abney later on. We can't go that far off the board, though. We need that forward, but we also still need defense, and we can't go that far off the board to try and get this guy. Yeah, he's more of a project for sure. So we'll go ahead and take a look. It's either going to be... Uh, Turakov or Fuller. I'm leaning Fuller just for the fact that he is a two-way. Let's take a look at Turakov. A-minus shooting, good puck skills, really good uh, skating and physical. The defense is okay, comparable to Al McKinnis. And looking at Fuller, did very well for Valdor. Oh, yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. Comparable to Victor Hedman. Again, only one B grade as opposed to the two. An A minus, a couple of A minuses in there. So again, the skating and the physical, amazing for Turakov. But uh, no doubt, Barry Fuller is the guy. Uh, we will take the Canadian defenseman, Barry Fuller. How, uh, how good he ends up being, time will tell. But I'm okay with that pick, even if we were looking for a forward. Again, we're still in that early stage where anything helps, especially on defense. 
Uh, Marcel Rue. Marcel Rue. Comparable to David Perron. Not really all that excited with what I'm seeing there. Tiny Kennedy on defense. I mean, unless there's a defenseman where it's like, yeah, we have to take him. Like, we cannot look past him. Like Pilstrom being a gem in low elite. Oh, boy. Okay, that's putting the pressure on. Let's go back up here because we know with Rue, a Rue that's not looking too good. Uh, Letuviori, three points. No. Uh, Jason Saad, no. So Pilstrom, five points. Decent as well. Man, he might have to be the guy. At the very least, our defense is going to be stacked moving forward. Uh, Shudin is okay, but we know what the potential is. What about Derek Martin, the 18-year-old? Not much to go off of. Joachim Ristolainen looking okay, but it's an inaccurate report. Matthew Henrique, another defenseman. Definitely more of a project than Pilstrom. I'm thinking Pilstrom is going to be the guy here. Ralph Chorney, not as much to go off of. Parody, Hugo Parody, also a gem though. We don't know as much about him. I think, if anything, man, again, still Pilstrom has to be the guy. Parise, though. Hugo Parise, we know how good he is, at least. A little bit more of a project, but he could be that forward that we need. I think he's going to be the guy. Ty Paulus is okay, but nothing too crazy. A Shea Weber style should be pretty nice. Chemo Filpula, nothing there really either. As we're approaching uh, players you expect to start seeing in the third round. Let's take a look at Jay Ferrelli. I'm not really digging it. So let's see. As far as pinned players, we have Pilstrom, who again with those grades, a C in defense, but he is a gem. There's Hugo Parise. Again, so all C's except for two B minuses and Parody. Um, again, who doesn't have as accurate of information comparable to Eric Stahl, so. It comes down to, and here's the thing with uh, parity as well. We don't know for sure if he's medium top six. That could be low. So Hugo Parise, Hugo Parody, or Nico Pilstrom. And I got to be honest, Pilstrom is the best looking out of the bunch. We do need that offensive help. But right now, it's still about drafting the best player available. And Parise is definitely more of a project. Right now, Pilstrom's looking tremendous. Damn, 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 damn. I don't know. I honestly don't know as far as this pick is concerned who the hell to take. Normally, I would go for the medium six, uh, you know, the forward in Parise. Uh, but Pilstrom is looking decent. Of course, Parody was also a gem. Regardless, we wouldn't really be going that far off the board either. So Parise went from 52. Pilstrom still at a 40. Our scout has Pilstrom at 36. I have to go for Nico Pilstrom. I have to. He's just, he's that good. He is that good. And unfortunately, get ready for a quick jump cut because the dog's going crazy. All right, we're good. And my mind is made up. We needed the forward. But I'm going to take the defenseman, I think. We still need to go for best player available. And Pilstrom is just, it's you know, the fact it's low elite, but he's a gem. And our scout has him at 36 on the board. But Parise. Pilstrom, Parise. God, this sucks. Pilstrom. Pilstrom. Let's go for Pilstrom. We need forwards, we need defensemen, I'm taking Pilstrom, and I'm going to trust that with that gem status, he might end up being a little bit better than what we're hoping for. Maybe. I don't know. Am I going to regret that? There is a chance. There is a chance. Am I already regretting it? Kind of. But, you know, bolstering up the defense right now, not a bad way to go. Isaac Hemingway is a goaltender. No thank you. Roberto Booz. Hello. A minus shooting. I know that you are... Uh, a low top six, but that's not too bad. What about Eve Bolduc? Yeah, you're okay. Not as reliable. Anybody else? Low four, Patrick Kalus. Definitely more of a project. A Finneganoff. Nightingale? Not terrible. I think I like Booze a little bit more. Shh, definitely. So right now, as it stands, he is the guy. Unless Marcus Sokoloff really 
runs away with it, which he does not. Good uh, shooting. Comparable to Max Pacioretty, huh? Oh, I'm going to put him on the board for the moment. Salonen as a defenseman. Meh. Who else do we have here? Brock Beach. Looking okay, but nothing really to go off of. And then there's uh, Jace Abney again at a medium elite, but much more of a project. Like, he's going to be a low overall. We have Emerson as well, who's not that bad. Jacobson, Jacobson, Jacobson. Uh, the starter and Morgan Doyle, who we don't really need anyway. And Bryson Abdelkader. I think... I think we have this sorted. Unless Jalen Elnewick... No. I think we have this sorted here as well. It comes down to Booz, Sokoloff, or Abney. Like I said, I know Abney is more of a project. Booz was looking pretty good, pretty well-rounded. Just not that physical, not that great defensively. Or we could take the risk with Sokoloff. Our scout has Booz at 70. The other two at least further down. We're going to take Roberto Booz here. And uh, get a little bit of help on the offensive side of things. Considering this draft has uh, been very defensive heavy thus far. Uh, so as far as how this is going, man, time will tell. Time will tell. People might remember this as a draft where I really kind of botched it. Could be the case. Now, let's see, Kapitanov, meh, Knights, also kind of meh, Tarasov, no. Then again, Jalen Elnewick, gotta love traffic outside that's loud as hell. Love it, love it. Chistoff, also not that great. Halvardson, Halvardson, hello Halvardson. Not as good of a shot as the guy we just took, but not completely terrible. Ariel Stolarz, not much to go off of. Zane McKee, the goaltender, will avoid. Lassard locked in at a medium top six. More of a project. Very physical player as a power forward. Definitely someone to look at. We also have Pavel Goldobin, Stanislav Anisimov as the defenseman option, the defensive option in general. Uh, Kali Hornqvist, not so much. Oduya, not so much. Connor Grant isn't terrible, but not great. I think we have our go-to option here, Stephen Kobayashi. I think we have our go-to here. Unless Beach has something to say about it, which he really doesn't off of the info that we have. Locked Yanoff and Varakis, a different Varakis this time. All right, and well, Maurice Bure. Much more of a project. Yikes. It's going to be a very, very low overall. So as far as who is pinned, it comes down to Lassard or it comes down to Halvardson. Halvardson is a bit further along than Lassard, but Lassard has that higher potential. It's not a drastic difference. Lassard's looking all right, though. I'm going to go for Halvardson here. I know the potential's lower, but he's much further along than Lassard. Uh, Lassard really just has the physical play going for him. So, Halvardson, the Swede. Why not? Let's try to be a bit unorthodox with what we're doing here. Especially, too, when we can see that, yeah, he has a higher potential, but he's much further off uh, from being a, you know, an actual player anytime soon. Kobayashi, of course, we were going to pass up on. There was Francis Beach, who again, not overly sold on. We have Loktyanov, Barakas, where were the next, uh, the next guys? Bure is still there. Definitely more of a project, but at the very least he's 18. Svoboda. What about Lewis? Harvey Lewis, not terrible. Corbin Trevica, injury prone. Mayorov, not a ton to go off of there though. Cody Callahan. Same thing. Do we have anybody else that's kind of locked in at this point? Mietnin on defense. Not really. We have the six there. The low elite. A Mickelson. Parker Mickelson. Oh, boy. Our scouts kind of dropped the ball here. Hello, Whitmore, though. The grinder. Keegan Whitmore. He's a project, but he's listed as a gem at 17, and that could be enough. Jude Cutler... I think we'll probably end up taking the gem at this point, especially, too. It said it was a good draft. We do have Votek Schmied 
Schmied's looking pretty good. Good shooting, good puck skills, good skating. Okay, maybe not. You know, it's picking up a little bit. Safranov, not much to go off of. Holmquist, not much to go off of. And then there's Webb, another gem who definitely looks like more of a project. Tristan Boltz, not much to go off of. Kari Ranta, as a goaltender, I think we're good. So who do we have pinned here? We have these four. Our scout has Bure listed uh, as the best available. He's also the highest rated on the board. So we are going to go for Maurice Bure. Definitely more of a project, though. Although, hmm. Because Smead might still be available. We should be able to get one of the other three between Smead, Whitmore, and Webb. So let's take, let's trust the scout. Let's trust the uh, prospect Maurice Bure here. And we'll hope that one of the other three happen to be available in the sixth round. That should be the case. Fingers crossed. If not, not the end of the world. Uh, but I'm happy to take more of a project at this stage in the draft uh, than early on. We need to get that near immediately game changer. So Whitmore is still there, Cutler. So Whitmore will probably be the pick here. Although, again, it's late enough in the draft. We can just start looking at the potentials. Artem Safranov. Comparable to Grabner. You'd think he'd have like A-plus skating by default. We have Ranta, who we're not going to take. Uh, we have Sasaki, Patrick Sasaki. The traffic, my God. Uh, Sasaki's looking okay. There's no way you can't hear that. Jesus. Patrick Sasaki. Uh, listed as a gem, I'm not overly impressed. Uh, same thing, Cutler. I mean, the shooting could be okay. Everything else is kind of rough. Webb, Holmquist, we have Welch. Did I look at Holmquist? Eh, what about Welch? Welch is, again, same thing. Don't have a ton to go off of. Then it drops down to guys like Bolt. So as far as who we're taking here, I mean, if we look at the pinned options, it comes down to these five. Highest rated by our scouts is Whitmore. Keegan Whitmore, who has the highest grades? So Schmied has the really good shooting puck skills and skating. Sasaki, more of a project. Whitmore, more of a project as well, but listed as a gem. And Webb, I gotta be honest. I'm gonna trust Smead here. I like that he's a little bit further along. I'm not gonna trust the gem at this point. Especially with it being a low elite grinder. I think I'd rather trust the 2A. I mean, our scout, though, has Whitmore well ahead. Well ahead, as does Central Scouting, well ahead of Schmied. Which, again, is kind of surprising. I like the grade there. He just can't play defense as a two-way. Whitmore is not overly physical. <sighs> let's let's trust the scout. Let's go for Keegan Whitmore here. I like the idea of drafting Smead. Maybe by some miracle he'll still be available here in the seventh round. Hopefully at least one of the players. Safranov is still available. Hopefully at least one's still there. Sasaki, Webb, and Safranov. Well, let's see. Safranov not exactly locked in. B minus there. We have Webb. And we have Patrick Sasaki. I'm going to trust Webb on this one. Higher rated by our scout. Also a year younger. I think we are good to go in Webb being our selection. Especially with the, uh, the gem tag as well. One final look at the potentials here. Yeah, it's going to be Webb. Bryson Webb from the Gatineau Olympics. No uh, no comparison, but Webb is the guy and thus completes another draft for us. How we ended up doing, I'm not entirely sure. We did take the two defensemen to begin, but from there we did get some much-needed help at forward. Whether or not this worked out or not, again, time will tell. For now, I'm feeling good about it, though, of course. Feeling good about it. I like how the team is set up. Uh, you know, again, how we're doing so far in terms of having what looks to be two game changers on defense. Potential in goal. Fragapain still here looking pretty good as well. Uh, Kaliev being up to a 77 is huge. I'd say the big thing here right now, though, is just how do some of these goaltenders develop, uh, particularly Wilson and Sestito. And again, defensively. 
You have Cook, who's also looking pretty good. Could be a third-pairing guy for us for years to come. It'll be the uh, development of Jenks. How well or how good are Fuller and Pilstrom as those two top picks? Our defense, in reality, at least the early stages of our top six on defense, could be set. We could have the main six moving forward already on the team and then forward wise as well obviously it's still not looking that great but there is an outside chance maybe that one of these five end up looking halfway decent and could really add to the nhl roster next season that said you're damn right i'm gonna leave you on a cliffhanger we will find out in the next episode what the new members of this squad look like and we'll also sim through the next season because of course we're not going to make the playoffs anytime soon, so we got nothing to do but sim, sim, and sim some more. So thank you guys yet again for your support with this series. I hope you did enjoy this episode. Admittedly, quite tired while recording this one, so I hope the quality was up to snuff. Looking forward to seeing what you guys had to think down in the comments below. Who would you have taken in that draft? Tell me what an idiot I am, because you're probably not wrong. Thanks for watching. As always, support the video and support the channel. Goodbye for now, but only for now. We will be back with another episode soon.